Infrared satellites soaring miles above Earth have spotted dozens of American prisoners of war still trapped on enemy soil. Missing for years, but never forgotten, these men must be brought home. But America is in no position to risk an all-out invasion that could prompt retaliation. Instead, the only possible hope for their freedom is a small-scale commando raid, codenamed Jackal. Immediately, the President turns to the Green Berets in their combat-ready, tactical infiltration, Jeep Squad. The Jeep Squad, comprised of 20 all-terrain, four-wheel drive, super mobile attack Jeeps, each equipped with one driver and one gunner. Only 40 of the Green Berets, bravest and most cunning soldiers, belong to this elite fighting force. And because of the secrecy of the mission, only a few of them qualify for the rescue attempt. Needless to say, you've been chosen to be one of the few, the proud, the Jackals. And what an amazing introduction that it has. That was an excerpt taken from the Manual of Jackal, released by our good friends at Konami in 1988 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is one of the NES's finest, in my opinion. All around, it just has phenomenal gameplay. The sound and music is incredible, catchy, and the graphics, really, for this day and age, are just stunning. In North America, Jackal was actually released in the arcades by Konami in 1986 under the name Top Gunner, which is also a fantastic game for the arcades. I love the pace, the sound effects are incredible, the music's just as good, and I just love the overall feel of the arcade setting. Of course, the arcade port came first, so that's what Konami used to mold the NES version out of. So the NES port, for the most part, resembles the same as the arcade version, except for some subtle differences in level design. Also, the ending boss, I believe, is different. Jackal has a sweet spot in my heart. I think this game has a lot of firsts that we'll discuss, but on top of it having a lot of neat and interesting, innovative things for the time, it was one of the first games I could sit down and play through the entire game and really enjoy myself. Although there are some really frustrating parts in this game that I will show a little bit later, it's a wonderful experience throughout. Jackal is a top-down run and gun where you drive your Jeep, trying to rescue POWs throughout, and killing any enemy in sight. One of the first games I ever played where the enemies have to attack you in order to kill you. And in today's world, something like that's been common just about as long as eternity. But back in this day, this was a whole new concept to see. It created a really cool element for the gameplay. So you could run over people that were running around on the ground, enemies shooting at you. You could also run into enemies and take them out. Of course, it would kill you in the process, but it was an option. Sometimes you just gotta go in kamikaze style. So you have two forms of weapons. You can shoot a machine gun or throw a grenade. That's a standard and default weapon. Machine gun, of course, taking maybe an extra couple of hits to destroy the enemy, as the grenade will destroy most enemies in one hit. So you blaze through the desert here, running over or shooting enemies that are on foot, taking out turrets, guns, and any other vehicle or boat or aircraft that you see flying around. So take out the enemies, drive around to these prisoner POW camps, shoot the building with a grenade, the side opens up, and the POWs come running out. Help me! And I know it seems like this Jeep maybe can hold two to three, maybe four at most people in it. Nah, uh-uh. You fill that baby to the brim. Just on level one alone, how many did I unload? I think it was like 12 or 13. I don't know, let's count them. Yeah, so there you can see. Packed like sardines, but hey, it's good to be free. And so speaking of rescuing the POWs there, there's a general or a lieutenant or a colonel, I'm not sure, whoever they are, they're more important than the other dudes because they're flashing. And when you pick them up, they're the ones that give you a power up. So it changes your grenade into like a, a rocket or a missile. And if you collect more and more of these types of people, then it increases your power up. And let me just tell you, the power ups add a whole new dimension to the game. And after you get them, you realize just how puny and horrible it is to have the grenade. It's so slow and dinky. <laughs> I mean, you get a missile that spreads four-way. I mean, it's complete ownage after that. You know, and then after playing the game for a little while, you start to get familiar with the controls, with how the guns work, and how it's all important to shoot at certain angles at certain times. Because it does take a little bit to getting used to, because your Jeep does go diagonal, but the machine gun always shoots directly in front of you, doesn't matter which way the Jeep's facing. But the rocket will shoot whichever direction the front of the vehicle is facing, so... It takes a little getting used to it to make sure that rocket goes and hits its target. But let me tell you, I love getting the full maxed out power up because the spread is incredible on it. I mean, it becomes like Combo City. Maybe it's the love of killer instinct in me that just gets me thinking this way, but seriously, check this out. 
Awesome combo! Brutal combo! Blaster combo! Brutal hyper combo! Triple combo! <laughs> it really is a blast to do. But let me ask you a question. What's up in level two with these banana things? I mean, seriously, that looks like a banana. I always wanted to eat a banana after playing this level two. I remember. So weird. But speaking of the second level, how about that ending boss on the second level? I'm really impressed with my playing here. I straight up owned it. Check this out. It's like, here you go. Fight Medusa head here. And as if there's not enough going on, shooting rockets out of its mouth. I've got tanks to deal with. But check this out. I think I handled business pretty well. So then it hooks you up with the splash screen, you know, four buying over the hills and deserts, pretty nice. Then it gives you a little map, shows you where you're going. Then you realize that the game really isn't that long, to tell you the truth. And I guess that'll take me into my next section of some negatives on the game. Now the game really isn't that long, not that, you know, games need to be super long or super short. I mean, they are what they are, but it is quite short. So that's one thing it's got going against it. Another thing that really stands out when you're playing it is that it suffers from serious, serious lag. Because there, there really are so many things going on on the screen that it just can't do it all. There's bullets and rockets and enemies and jeeps and tanks and guns and planes and oh my. There are so many things going on that in some scenes it's almost unplayable. So as you can see, that's a little interesting. Sometimes it actually helps because then you can kind of calculate where bullets are going and get out of the way. <laughs> Now, when you rescue the POWs, you take them to the helipad, drop them off for the helicopter to take them to safety, you get 500 points per head. So you work towards an extra life. That's the only benefit of having them being rescued. Other than to free them, of course, that's good, that's good. But all in all, what really matters is that you're getting the power-ups, man. I'm telling you, because that really helps out the most. If you've got the power-up, you can just mow through everyone, just own them, which is nice. And they take so damn long to come out of the house. It's like, guys, don't do single file one by one. Just, just get out here all of you at the same time come on and in some of the compounds there's like two sometimes three homes to blow up and get man that just takes too much time i'm like if there isn't a general in here i'm peacing out as bad as that sounds, that's what I kind of ended up doing. Because let's say you capture and you've got 12 guys in your Jeep. Well, when you when you die and blow up, like only three or four come out of your Jeep. So what happened to the others? Where'd they all go? I wasted all that time to rescue them. But then when the Jeep blew up, oh, well, you know what happened. They all died. That's exactly what happened. So that sucks. So you kind of have to balance between are you going to go after them all and risk it all or are you going to just look for the uh, the flashing dude? You know, that's really the important part. So I guess, I mean, not necessarily a bad thing, just a little interesting thing. There are some parts in this game that are just impossible to pass without dying. You have to die and then become invincible to get through it. Like they're shooting guns at an angle to where you can't pass. Like this part right here. Like, look at that. There's no way you can get past it and then try to make a run for it. But even that doesn't work. How about this part right here? They have guns shooting at an angle and you can't go up far enough to hit the guns, like to, to launch a rocket off at an angle to get it. And there's a conveyor belt pushing you back. So you're even going slower. Your Jeep isn't fast enough to get by there anyway, even if there wasn't a conveyor belt, but now they make it worse. I mean, you have to die here. You have to die. So you have to lose all your power-ups, lose all your uh, POWs you rescued. It's just, it's just really ridiculous, to tell you the truth. I'm very frustrating. So how about the draw distance? Well, I guess so to speak. When you're moving around on the map and you drive left or right, it's really hard to see what's coming up in front of you. It doesn't really give you a lot of leeway. So there'll be like something popping up right in front of you that shoots you and instantly kills you. And you don't even know it's there because you can't physically see it. It's very frustrating. You have to just basically keep firing blind and hopefully you'll hit something. So that's kind of a weird thing. I wish it would have given you more of a distance to see in front of you instead of have your Jeep go all the way to the side of the screen before it advances to the next section. That's kind of screwed up. And lastly, you guys, I know I'm hitting it with some negatives because you know what? I love this game. I really do. But these things just really suck and they really piss me off. The thing is, why does it take one bullet to blow up the Jeep? One measly, stupid, white bullet. Why? Why? I don't understand that at all. I mean, if that was really the way it was in real life, <laughs> that would suck. But I'm serious, like one dude on foot can shoot you and take out your Jeep completely, like blown up and everything. That is 
absurd. So I really think they should have incorporated some sort of like health bar or armor or something for the Jeep. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. But that definitely increases the difficulty of the game. And this game is difficult, but it sure is fun all the way through. Now, don't get the wrong impression of what I'm giving you guys. I'm only I'm only talking about these things because I've played it so much and I really do love this game. So I guess it's kind of one of those love hate relationships I have. I love this game, but I just hate some of the gameplay decisions that were made by Konami. All right, so I'm blazing through the game. I finally make it to the last boss here. And as you can see, it is a fight to the finish. As if I don't have enough on my plate, I've got more tanks running around I gotta take care of, shooting rockets at me all over the place, bullets flying left and right. It takes only one hit for me to die so i'm on my toes doing real well and look at this it just takes forever to kill this machine but then i finally do and then look what pops out another tank not only does it shoot bullets it shoots out a ginormous flame now i'm telling you my jeep cannot move fast enough the final boss is just too fast and i cannot get out of the way quick enough and shoot you gotta line my jeep up it's almost like the crane game you gotta line the front of your jeep up to get a missile or grenade off to hit him at the right time when he's in line it's just so hard to do it's unbelievable and of course machine gun doesn't do anything to him and i'm here i'm trying my best i got my turbo button mashed down to the fullest i'm sitting i'm trying to hit him but uh, nonetheless I get taken out. What? Game over. I use like, I think I use like two continues. Well, I guess that is kind of noob of me. But really? That's it? Oh my gosh. And then it, it takes me right back to the splash screen. So that's it. You know what? I love you guys and I love playing these games, but I'm telling you, I'm not going to sit through that just to see the ending, which is probably a splash screen of everyone standing around, giving everybody a thumbs up, pat on the back. You're awesome. You rescued everyone. You're the coolest guy on the block. You know, I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. <laughs> so, hey, don't get the wrong impression or the wrong idea of this review. This is a fantastic game. One of the first that I thoroughly enjoyed playing with my brothers. I play this with my father quite a bit. This is a great game. The graphics are incredible for the time. The gameplay is excellent. It's definitely hard and they only give you i think it's two continues so watch your back rescue the pow's complete your mission and go home happy this game is fantastic in single player but let me tell you it shines with two player you cannot hurt your teammate so that's a huge plus there's so much going on so much chaos it really takes the weight off of it when there's two people playing so definitely grab a friend and enjoy this wonderful wonderful game on the nes and if you get a chance if you ever see it in the arcades anywhere i haven't actually physically seen an arcade cab of this but if you do come across one man pump some quarters into it it's an awesome awesome arcade game now despite some of the gameplay choices konami made the difficulty the only two continues some of the parts and the levels being completely impossible to pass without dying i'm still going to rate this game pretty high because i think all of those factor in and make this a complete package and like i said i have a sweet spot for this game i played it a ton because remember i broke my leg in the same year that this came out so i spent days on the couch playing this game so i'm still going to give it a very respectable grade so hey the emulated review grade for Jackal. This game gets an A minus. <laughs> <laughs>